Today is the extraordinary beginning of a new era. Happy May, everyone. My name is Jared, and hereby will I, together with you, celebrate the conclusion of the first third of 2018 with the Rotuman language lesson number one. Let's go ahead. Oh, there's a game, too. That's going to be mighty interesting. So I guess that's going to really help with, you know, fusing the Let's Play videos that I put on on pause until I get a significant higher amount of subscribers because I think I'm focusing a lot more on educational content because I think that's really what a lot of people want. Okay, so we read this last time. We did pronunciation last time. The various words from the guide I also put into a memorized course and let's have ourselves a read in lesson one. Oh, this is so exciting. Rotoman language lessons prepared by Marit Vamarasi and Chotama Vamarasi, the musical. No. Okay. I really like it very much. It would be interesting. Has anyone ever tried to combine musical theater and language learning? That would be a very interesting idea. Introduction. These lessons are being prepared in order to help overseas Rotumans who either do not know the language or feel that they do not know it well enough. It is hoped that these lessons will be a first step towards the maintenance of the Rotuman language and culture into the next century and beyond. Yeah! Please consider this lesson one to be a draft only. Feel free to give a copy to anyone who might be interested. Well, I guess this video manages to take care of this. Instructions. These lessons are meant to be used with a native speaker who can read the Rotuman and provide a pronunciation model to the listener. Learner. Okay. Well, I guess that could be you, if you're watching that. Okay. Watching this. Okay. For that reason, there is not much information about pronunciation here. Eventually, we would like to put up uh, these on a CD-ROM, but this is a more traditional style of lesson. In, oh, okay, I cannot sentence today, but this more traditional style of lesson is an important first step. The boldface items in the dialogue indicate that those words and structures will be explained in the grammar section which follows. The line in the dialogue... Not, Lines in the dialogue are numbered so that it can be easily referred to in the grammar section. I have tried to follow the Rotuman writing system, where the symbols are available on my computer keyboard. Instead of the macron, the line that goes over vowels to indicate length, I have reduplicated the letter. Okay, so Marid Vamarasi, Chotama, Mua Hea, Hea Vamarasi. I think Hea Hea might have actually been one of the vocabulary words for the pronunciation lesson last time. Okay. Rotuman lesson number one, my life will change now for the better, and it's never going back in a good way. Okay, no aya ko ha, okay, no aya ko hante ka ai, try it again, <laughs> this is going to be a lot harder than I expected, no aya ko hante ka ai tap tap in. Hi dear, how are you? Oh dear. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to be here in a long time. I might even need to do like a take two and, uh, of me not struggling with this. Okay. No ayako hante. Ka e tap tapin. Hi dear. How are you? Fa i a se e a ka go ne ne le le ka tapin ai. Thanks. I'm fine. And how are you? Go nenele le tapema. I'm fine too. Avroahe go ka re re ra se ae. I haven't seen you for a long time. Kota hoim kohante. I just got back. Ete ka e la se hanua. From where did you go abroad? Go la ma ma as se oto re ta e setne. I went to visit my children in Sydney. Now note that it's, um, how do I put it? Like we've seen in other languages of Oceania, we've had this in the Fijian and Kiribati series as well, that uh, there's uh, Western names will often be um, adopted to the new phonology and writing system. And so Sydney we actually have. So if you remember from the um, Kilbertes episode that I published for my mom's birthday, two days ago that we had Anna and Bauro instead of Anna and Paul. Okay, so, oh yeah, I gotta do this again. Okay, Oto, 
O O Tauag Kata Pen Iris. No wonder and how are they? Okay. Fai Akse Aka Iris Leleta Pemma. Thank you. They are well too. Oto han folu inos aka atakoa. Okay, that's again. Oto han folu inos atakoa. Ka oto fa haharag taraklamo. My three daughters are all married, but my youngest son is still in school. Okay. O fa ta nene tapema. That is well too. Okay. Gagaja no aya. I really like that. Gagaja no aya. Thank God. Oto fa ta te e lepanoni. My husband is in Lebanon. Aha! Is there actually like some variety of uh, overseas expatriate community there? Hmm, that's very interesting. Okay. Ka ia la maroa. Did he go long ago? Faut e lapo. Close to a year. No aia maitar orse. Ka go la la hoakia oto afta e ofesne ea pacifiacta. Okay, it's been good to talk to you, but I'm going to take my bag from the Air Pacific office. Lele, ita la or ho iak, aet te la la au. I think the this either so the question mark here is either supposed to be a, uh, I think it's a, supposed to be a question mark, but sometimes I think I've seen a glottal stop in like that, but we already have this, thanks to, you know, our adventures in Tongan, which I paused and won into that I've never filmed. Okay, so lele eta la or ho ayak. Good, we'll chat again. Aeta la la o. Goodbye. E. Aeta la fu o. Goodbye. Grammar notes. Oh, God, let's see exactly how many of these we have. Oh, well, this looks mighty fun. Also, coloring exercises. Yeah, no. Okay. Um, the word hante, glossed in one, is deer, is related to the word honey, meaning both woman and wife. Hence, this expression can only be directed as a female. Hmm. Yeah, um, my English loanword sense concerning Honey is um, going haywire here. Okay, but chances are it's probably a red herring. The conjunction ka is sometimes translated as and, and sometimes is but, but it is usually best left untranslated into English. In 5 and 10, ka functions as a sort of question marker. I think I've seen this in the rough guide, uh, you know, 50, 23 phrases that were provided. Actually, I think it was more like 25. Okay. Some of the phrases were actually individual words. I think three of them were actually names of Rotuman dishes. Rotuman has two-part negative. Cut, or kal in the future, goes before the verb or adjective. Ra follows the verb or adjective. Okay, so I think that we've seen some languages. I think French, Breton have a similar system. Uh, so a uh, non that goes beforehand and then another not that goes afterwards. And so, uh, for example, to say, I don't know in Breton would be nous on get. And so the and at the beginning indicates the not, and then get at the end also indicates the not. Um, and then in Fijian, we have sengani kila. And so sengani, both words go before, and they serve to indicate not, but I think that's completely different. Okay. Ra part sometimes follows a postverbal adverb, such as hoiak, again, in maroa, for a long time, both occur before the ra part of the negative. Otuman has a set of three verbal suffixes that are called directionals, which indicate the direction of the action expressed by the verb in relation to the speaker. The subject, mm, oh, the suffix, yeah, I'm mixing up all my similar words today. Jared, wake up. You're on camera. Okay. The suffix, mm, seen in four, shows that the action is towards the speaker. The suffix, ofo, is used for actions away from the speaker. What? What? <laughs> okay. Prepositions often differ greatly between languages. In this conversation, you can see examples of three Rotuman prepositions. Se, in each case, translated as to or with some verbs, it requires no English translation. E, translated as either at, in, or from, and ne, of. In most cases, the context will determine which meaning a certain preposition has. Okay. 
One cannot speak a language without using pronouns. Burmese says hi. Uh, in this conversation, you see several pronouns being used. I, meaning you, singular only. It is they, them. Ia, he or she. And itar, we too. By the way, the Burmese comment was actually meant as a joke. Obviously, there are pronouns there, but you'll actually notice that they tend to be omitted in a lot of sentences. Uh, usually, the subject is implied. I know that it's not the only language like this. Okay, the possessive pronoun for my is oto. The article ta occurs at the end of a singular noun phrase and means something like the. Okay, so I think that's probably distantly related to the Gilbertese te, which I think, okay, uh, oh, is it? Okay, Jared, stop hopping to conclusions and read the text. Okay, the other article, meaning a, is the suffix t, or the particle het both of which follow the last word of a noun phrase. Intransitive verbs, that is, those that do not take a direct object, often have suffixes which indicate who is the subject. In 13, you see an example of the you suffix, o, oh, and in 14, an example of the i suffix, o. Oh. The verb la, to go, is the one that takes these uh, subject suffixes. Okay, so let's see an example of this. So. La, okay, la, how many examples of la do we have in here? Way too many, okay, okay, la, okay, fine, I'm trying to find uh, varieties of la, okay, where, where are the suffixes? Where are the suffixes? Okay, one day I'm going to figure all of this out, okay, la, ow. okay, so I think, uh, all right, one day I'm going to figure this out. Obviously, if you know anything about this, you know, I do this so that people out there can help me when I need it. I also know that to some degree, this may also be an interesting thing for me to look back on when I get better. Like already with some of my old Fiji Hindi videos, I think that sometimes I've been catching pronunciation mistakes and things that I've said that have sometimes been very, very wrong. And uh, it's a pity that I think time travel is possibly a distinct impossibility. As far as I can tell, but, uh, you know, science has a way of surprising us. Okay. All right. Um, past, present, and future tenses are not indicated by affixes on road to human verbs. Rather, when the tense is expressed at all, it is expressed by a proverbial particle. In this dialogue, you will see the future indicated by la and tela. And does it go after or before? Let's have a look. Okay. This time, I hope to not screw it up. Okay. Copy. Okay. All right. So I think it would probably go before. Okay. Literally, will you go? So okay. So I ta la la ao is goodbye, and it's actually a question like, are you going? And then I ta la hu o is wait. I'm going ahead of myself. So let's go ahead and uh, <laughs> let's Jared. You are all over the place today. Okay, useful vocabulary words and expressions. Try to memorize these. Okay, no aya, hello or hi, fa aksea, thank you. I tap the pen, tap in I. How are you? Go nene lele. I'm fine. Okay, and here comes the big biggie. Avro ahead go kat re re ra se a. Avro ahead go kat re re ra se a. It's been a long time since I last saw you. A long time. Avro ahead is a long time. I haven't seen you. And then, <laughs> I can imagine this is a response to that. He said, oh, I haven't seen you for a long time. And then someone non -plus says, thank God. <laughs> That's not very nice of you, Mr. or Miss Dialogue. Okay. Gagaja no aya. Thank God. Okay, no, I am ma or se. It's been good to chat with you. Okay, ita la or ho ak. Let's chat again. I ta la la ao. Goodbye. Literally, will you go? This is said to the one who is leaving. Na I ta la fo o. Okay, let's try that again. I ta la fo o. Goodbye. Literally, you will stay. This is said only to the one who is staying. Oh, yeah, Northern Sami, wow. 
<laughs> I, I've seen this pattern, and, and Irish, I've seen this pattern so many times. So many times. Okay. Practice road to negatives by negating the following sentences. Give the new meanings of the sentences. Okay. Uh, okay. Next. All right. Fill in the... Uh, okay. I'm going to probably have to do these. Oh, oh, oh. They actually have the answers to the exercises. So I think that is going to be significantly better. Uh, I guess I'm probably going to have to... Here's an idea, because I think that a lot of people really want information quickly. I'm going to probably transform the exercises into phrases, and I'll do that for the next time. Okay, this is going to be very interesting. And also, as a somewhat daredevil move, I'm going to exactly see how much of this language I can speak into a recorder with having studied it for, you know, little less than an hour at this point. Well, that's going to be mighty, mighty fun. I believe in myself. You should too, by the way. Have a good one, and see you next time.